Hello everyone. A very warm welcome to you all in the teaching show. Uh, so in this video, we are going to take uh, reactions which are taking place now in more than one unit. So till now we had seen reactive systems which were taking place only in a single unit. And I told you how to handle it using uh, either atomic species balance or molecular species balance or using extent of reaction. Now I have the reaction which is taking place in two different units. So I have two different reactions which are taking place in two different units. So this is uh, an example which I have taken again an unsalt from Himmelblau. Okay, and this involves the production of uh, sulfuric acid. So for producing sulfuric acid, usually sulfur is burnt with excess of oxygen. Okay, so this is the reaction and they say that it, go on, it has only 90% conversion. Now these are the things which are coming out. Further, this stream now goes to a converter where in presence of oxygen, sulfur dioxide gets converted into sulfur trioxide. Okay, the conversion of this reaction is given as 95%. Now the basis is given in this problem. It is 100 kgs of your sulfur. Okay, and it has been asked to find out how much air do you require per 100 kg of sulfuric uh, of sulfur which is used. Okay, now there are some things in the problem which have been given to you, of course, to make the degree of freedom zero. So, one of the two of the process specifications are 90% conversion in reactor, 95% conversion in um, converter. Okay, now uh, it is given that oxygen is used in 100% excess and of course one more process specification you know that if air is used then nitrogen to oxygen ratio in the air is fixed okay so I have in all total four process specifications which have been given in this problem okay now uh, next step uh, will be to make a fully labeled flowchart so I have marked all the uh, flow rates oxygen N1 nitrogen N2 some of the sulfur will not get burned because only 90% is getting burned. So sulfur is coming out as a solid stream. So I am sh showing it in a different stream which is coming out. This is my gaseous stream which is coming out of the reactor. And it contains sulfur dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. So I have marked it as N4, N5 and N6. Then after converting again your <coughs> conversion is not 100% so that's why some amount of unconverted sulfur dioxide will also come out so I have sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide oxygen and nitrogen so this is the labeled flowchart which I have drawn now I will start the problem so I am choosing for this problem atomic species balance okay before doing that let's quickly okay so because you know in multiple if you have multiple units I told you you have a choice either you can start with you know your entire overall system or you can uh, solve first on this unit and then on this unit so let's quickly check what are the degree of freedoms okay so I will check my degree of freedom on this unit how many variables do I have so I am doing a degree of freedom analysis for atomic species balance so I have how many variables one two three four five six in all I have six variables okay then how many uh, independent atomic species balance I can take? I have sulfur, oxygen, that's all. So I can take two atomic species balance. How many inert balance I can take? I have one inert, so minus one. Okay. Then I have how many process specifications? One is this, 90% conversion. Second is this, 100% excess. And third is this, the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen. So I have three process specifications. So 6 minus 2 minus 1 minus 3, that is 0. So my degree of freedom has come out to be 0. So let's start first solving on the reactor. Okay. So when I start solving on the reactor, I told you, you first go and solve, use, first make use of all the process specifications okay so first process specification which i am going to use over here is now that 90 percent of sulfur is getting converted to so2 that means the fraction which is unconverted the fraction converted is 0.9 so the fraction unconverted is 1 minus f and that is equal to 1 minus 0 0.9 okay and that times whatever you are feeding that should be coming out as unreacted sulfur, okay? So it should be N3. 
So my N3 directly is then 0.1 into 100 that means uh, okay. Now I will show you what problem you are doing is that you have been given a basis you started your problem directly like that. Don't do this okay because now I am taking atomic species balance I am talking about moles and this and that. So what will happen is first of all you have to convert your flow rate into molar flow rate okay. So never commit this mistake that you start solving your problem without checking whether you have you know um, how you have labeled the flow chart see I have labeled it everything in uh, mole fractions or molar flow rates okay so first of all I have to convert this 100 kg of sulfur into my molar flow rate so what is the uh, molecular weight of sulfur that is 32 so if I divide 100 by 32 I get a value which is something like 3.125 kilomoles so I have basically 3.125 kilomoles. So again I showed you where you can commit a mistake. If you had started with 100 kgs of sulfur and started doing it with kg, it, it would have been a problem. Okay. So now I have marked it out. I have this much amount of sulfur. Now I can solve this problem. Okay. So how much N3 is coming out? Of course it is um, 1 minus F times your sulfur which is going in that is 3.125 kilomoles okay so 0.1 times this it will be 0 0.3125 kilomoles so my n3 i have marked okay i know immediately 0 0.3125 kilomoles now i'm going to use my second process specification and that process specification is that i am using 100 percent of excess oxygen okay so Again, write down the formula of excess component. What is that? Uh, what you are feeding? You are feeding N1 amount. So the oxygen which is fed minus the oxygen which is the stoichiometric requirement divided by the stoichiometric requirement and multiplied with 100. And that should come out to be equal to 100 because oxygen is used 100% in excess. Now, uh, let's just write quickly. So what is the stoichiometric uh, requirement for oxygen? See over here, one mole requires one mole of oxygen. So 3.125 kilomoles of sulfur, they will require 3.125 kilomoles of oxygen. Okay. So I have equal to 1. Fine. So if I solve this equation, it will be N1 is equal to 6.25 kilomoles. So now I have got, I have solved for another variable that is 6.25 kilomoles. Then I am going to use my third process specification. What is that? Nitrogen to oxygen ratio is always 79 to 21. If I make use of that, what do I get? My um, N2 by N1, it is always equal to 79 by 21. So N2 should be equal to 79 by 21 multiplied by n1 n1 i have calculated in the last step so i will go and find out what is n2 and this comes out to be uh, your flow rate as 23.512 kilomoles okay so i will again uh, write down whatever values i am getting i will keep on updating my flow chart so i am getting 23.512 kilomoles okay Next, what I have told you, after solving your all process specifications, whatever you have made use of, now make use of your inert balance, okay? Because inert is not taking part in the reaction, so it will be simply what is going in should be coming out. So my N2 should be equal to N6. So next part is my inert balance, which directly gives me N2 is equal to N6. So N6 is also my 23.512 kilomoles. Okay. Now only two variables have been left and I have two independent atomic species balance which have been left. So I can go and use make use of them one by one. Okay. So let's take first sulfur balance. So I am taking sulfur balance. Let's write down my sulfur balance. What is uh, going in? That is in is 3.125 kilomoles. What is coming out? N3 that is 
0.3125 kilo moles plus N4. Okay. 1 times N4. So I will solve this and I will get the value of N4. So my N4 is now 2.8125 kilo moles. See how simple the problem is. But if you see two reactors connected together, you might get scared. Okay. That's what I'm teaching you. That these problems, they are very simple. You can quickly do it and gain those points. Okay, so N4 we have calculated. What else now? I have to take only oxygen balance. Let's do that. Okay, uh, 2 times 6.25. That is the number of oxygen atoms which are going in. Uh, that should be equal to uh, 2 times N4. So I have 2 into 2.8125 plus uh, 2 times N5. Okay? So if I go and solve this, I will get N5 that is equal to, you can multiply it, subtract from this and then you get the answer as 3.4375 kilomoles. So within a single step, it has given me what are the various values. Okay? I am going to update my flowchart. 3.4375. 4375. Okay. So I have solved my problem on the reactor. Now I will go ahead and solve it on the converter. Okay. So before solving it, I will again go and check whether my degree of freedom is zero or not. And by now you must be very, you know, uh, comfortable with your degree of freedom calculation. Okay. So for atomic species balance, again, let's count down. How many, let's count, how many variables I have? Four. How many independent species, uh, atomic uh, species balance I have? I have sulfur and I have oxygen. So I have two of them. Inert balance, one. Then I have one process specification that 95% uh, conversion of this reaction is given. So minus one. Again it is 0. So my degree of freedom has come out to be 0 on the converter now. Now I can go and solve it. So I told you first of all let's make use of the process specification that is 95% conversion. If my fraction which has converted is equal to 0 0.95 then the fraction which has not converted that will be equal to 0 0.05. So Sulfur dioxide that is the unreacted fraction which is coming out. So it should be equal to N7 into N7 is equal to 1 minus F into N4. Okay. So going in is 2.8125 kilomoles. Out of it 1 minus F times this number. It should be coming out unreacted. So if I go and do that I get N7 is equal to 0 0.05 multiplied by that value and I get the value of N7 which is now 0 0.1406 kilomoles. Okay, I have made use of my process specification. Next I will do inert balance. Whatever nitrogen is going in is coming out. So I will update first of all my flow chart. And then, okay, nitrogen, so in is equal to out. So whatever is coming out, N10 I directly get as 23.512 kilomoles. Now what is left? I have made use of the process specification and I have made use of the inert balance. Now I am going to do sulfur balance. Okay, so my sulfur balance, what it will be equal to? Sulfur is going in, so it will be equal to? N4 which is going in, that should be equal to N7 plus N8. I know N7, so I can calculate now N8 from it. So N8 is nothing but N4 minus N7 and that is equal to 2.8125 minus 0 0.1406. So I get the value of my N7, oh sorry, N8, yeah, N8 as 2.6718 so I am writing it over here 
6718 kilo moles. Okay. Now the last step, I will take oxygen balance. So oxygen going in is 2 times N4 plus 2 times N5. And what is coming out? That is 2 times N7 plus 3 times N8 plus 2 times N9. Okay. The only thing which is unknown is N9. If I plug in all the values of N4, N5, N7, N8, then I will be able to calculate N9 which comes out to be 2.1017 kilomoles. Okay. Again I will update my this thing is equal to 2.1017 kilomoles. Okay. So now the problem is solved. You can go and calculate whatever has been asked. So what was asked in this was what are the mole fractions of the various components which are coming out. You can go and do it on your own. I will just do another part which says how much oxygen is required per 100 kg of sulfur. So let's find out. Sulfur is 3.125 kilomoles. Okay. For that I require oxygen that is equal to 6.25. If I convert it into kg, okay, then I have to multiply it with its molecular weight. So I multiply it with 32 and I get the amount of oxygen or in kg whatever I require or and then for nitrogen I will do the same thing into 28. Whatever kg I get, I can add the these two numbers and I get the amount of air which I require or else what you can do is that you can directly take you all know that the average molecular weight of air is taken as approximately as 29 okay so this plus this multiply it directly with 29 and you will get a number something uh, whatever you get so that will be the amount of air which is required for 100 kgs of sulfur Okay, so that is how you are going to solve this problem and um, I hope now you can solve uh, any, uh, you know, an, any problem which has reaction or without reaction, whether it has single unit or with, whether it has more than one unit, you should be comfortable in handling it. The procedure remains the same, okay, the way to handle it remains the same. First of all, uh, select a proper basis. Then second, you have to do is make a fully labeled flowchart like I have done over here. That makes the problem very simple. Then third point is that you calculate your degree of freedom. Wherever it is zero, you start your calculations from there. For example, we had first calculated degree of freedom over here. We found that it was zero. If I had gone and calculated my degree of freedom over here, it would not have come out to be zero for sure because at that time we didn't knew N4, N5 and N6. Okay, So that's why we just calculated the degree of freedom is fine. It is zero at the reactor. So I started my calculations. And then I calculated all these values. Then I went ahead and found my degree of freedom at the converter, which again came out to be zero. I knew that I have framed the problem properly. I have understood the problem properly and I solved it. Okay. The remaining things, they are very simple once you get this thing. Okay. So thanks a lot for watching and um, please subscribe to my channel. If you really find this video useful, hit the like button. Thank you very much.